Hey everybody, welcome to the Sim Hangar. My name's Mark. Thanks for watching, and let's get started. Helicopters are now officially supported in Microsoft Flight Simulator, and in this video, I'll be showing you how to configure your controllers. I'll also show you what to do so you can fix a sim bug that'll make your helicopters more flyable. Aerosoft have recently released Landmarks North Sea, featuring hundreds of ships, tankers, oil rigs and other platforms, bringing this part of the world to life. Full review coming soon. Sim Update 11 includes a number of bespoke helicopter controls, and we'll be configuring those. If you're looking for configuration guides, don't forget to subscribe for more like this. Flying helicopters is both enjoyable and frustrating in equal measure, but they're a great way to take in all the scenery. With all that out the way, let's get on and make your flight sim experience a more enjoyable one. Our first step is to check on the assistance options. From the options menu, we're going for assistance options. Open that and in the sub menu, on the left hand side, we're going to select piloting and we're going to scroll down towards the bottom. And here we'll find two assists, which are recommended to be on if you're new to helicopter flying. It's assisted tail rotor, and assisted cyclic. Make sure they're both on. This makes flying and managing the helicopter a little bit easier initially until you feel more confident in flying helicopters. When Sim Update 11 was released, if you were like me, you jumped into a helicopter and found that you couldn't fly it. It was unmanageable. That's because there's a bug in the Sim. For many, it's defaulting to the wrong flight model. Go to General Options, and from the left-hand menu, we want to choose Flight Model. Make sure in Sim that you've got a helicopter loaded and you've spawned on the ground at your selected airport or helipad. Microsoft Flight Simulator has two flight models, a Legacy one, which is the old FSX, and Modern, which is the new Microsoft Flight Simulator. Helicopters are defaulting to Legacy in error. My recommended way of fixing the bug is go up to the flight model, change it to Legacy, Make sure all the presets are set to realistic. Apply and save, and then exit the flight, or preferably the sim itself. Restart, place yourself on the ground at a suitable airport or helipad, and then, yes, you guessed it, we're going back to general options, back to the flight model, and we're going to change the flight model back to modern. When you do that, you don't have to worry about the presets, as they're all realistic by default. Apply and save, and you should be good to go. If not, restart your sim. Step 3. Let's prepare for making our helicopter profile. For this tutorial, I'm using Turtle Beach's Velocity 1 flight stick. But the changes that we're making, and the bindings that we're allocating to the various actions, will apply regardless of whatever peripheral you're using. So you don't have to have the flight stick to make this work. If you'd like to know more about the Turtle Beach Velocity 1 flight stick, I'll leave a link to my review video in the notes below. On PC, the flight stick comes with two default profiles. One unsurprisingly called default, and the second Velocity 1 flight stick-1. I can't really see much difference between the two profiles. If you're on Xbox, then you will already have a helicopter profile, but nonetheless you may be looking for a simpler and easier to understand profile, and you could start again as we're going to do here, or modify the existing profile. I'm going to select the default profile, then I'm going to select the preset manager from the bottom toolbar. I'm going to select the second icon from the left, duplicate. It prompts me to give it another name. You can name it obviously anything that you like. Once that's done, select OK. From the top menu bar, your new profile should now be showing as active, and the Velocity 1 flight stick profile should be highlighted. The default profile, of course, is not designed for helicopters, and is more suited to flying general GA aircraft. But I've selected this profile because there's a number of elements I want to keep that are a bit of a pain to reassign, predominantly those falling under the camera section. So this means we're going to have to clear out most of what's there takes a little bit of time, but once it's done, well, you won't have to do it again. So let's get on with it. For example, the bottom item, landing gear. Helicopters don't have landing gear, so I'll want to delete that. Currently it's showing joystick, button 4 is allocated to that. I click on that. The configuration menu pops up. 
and deleting an item is fairly straightforward. I'm going to select clear current input. That clears the binding, then validate, and it's gone. And now it's a process of just deleting any of the bindings that we don't require. Helicopters don't have throttles. They have something called a collective. We'll look at that just now. So under throttles, we can go ahead and delete all the items. When you return to the main menu, it has an annoying habit of opening all the different categories that have previously been opened. Once again, it's a sim bug. Exiting out of the control options menu and back in resolves that problem until you open other categories. Anyway, back to power management and throttle. As mentioned, we don't need a throttle access, so we can delete that. Clear current input and validate. And we can also delete the decreased throttle using exactly the same process. Power management's gone. It would be very tedious to go through every step, but we won't require any brakes. All flight control surfaces, both primary, secondary and trim, need to be deleted. And much of what's under miscellaneous and menu can also be deleted. If there's particular items you want to retain, well, you should do so during this process. I'm now going to go ahead and delete the rest of the unwanted items, and you should do the same. I'm nearly there now. Under radio, I don't want ATC, so I'll delete that. You'd keep it if you wanted it. And we're done. I've kept an option to toggle autopilot, interior and exterior lights, and auto start, and my camera settings. Other than that, it's completely clear. This is now effectively a blank, which I can use to build other profiles from. If you wanted to, you could give it another name by duplicating this profile, so in the future be easily identifiable. Remember to regularly apply and save. We're done and we can do a quick check before going any further. On the Velocity 1 flight stick, I can use the Hat 2 switch and look around, which is ideal because flying a helicopter is very hands-on and you don't have too much chance to use the mouse. For those using the flight stick, there's one problem. With the hat to switch when you look up, very often you'll continue to move upwards. This is because the button has not returned fully to center. But there's a fairly easy and quick fix for that. Back to the control options menu. With a profile highlighted, click on sensitivities. Moving my hat to switch, left and right, I see that it's joystick R axis X. Moving it side to side, and that's not a problem. It's the front and back axis that's the issue. Nonetheless, I recommend you put a dead zone in here of about 9%. Now for the look up and down axis. For hat switch 2, we see it's joystick R axis Y. And when I move it up and down slowly, you'll see that the center point is not centering correctly, unless I flick it. So once again, I'm going to add a dead zone of about 9%. And now, whether I move the hat switch up and down fast or slow, I'm no longer going to get creep. Click Done, Apply and Save, and we're ready now to start configuring for our helicopter. Before we get into our new configuration, a few explanations, as helicopter terminology is different to that used in general aviation. A helicopter has a collective, normally on the pilot's left-hand side, and in simplistic terms, this is your throttle. It governs the power fed to the main rotors. And the pilot also has effectively a joystick, which is referred to as the cyclic. And this carries out very much the same function as ailerons and elevator in an aircraft, allowing for pitch up and down and banking left or right. In addition to the main rotor blades, helicopters also have a tail rotor, effectively a propeller in the tail, with the main rotor blade spinning in one direction, creating torque, the body of the helicopter would naturally want to spin in the opposite direction, and the tail rotor helps to some degree to combat that and provide greater stability along with both vertical and horizontal stabilizers you can see above and in front of the tail rotor. And the final point I want to raise is the ideal viewing angle whilst flying a helicopter, and I suggest it's something similar to this. Most flying of a helicopter is done by looking outside. But I have view in the lower left of my vertical speed, above that my altitude, my horizon, and very importantly my speed, as well as the power being supplied to the rotors by the collective. If you want to know more details and correct terminology regarding a helicopter, there's plenty of information out there on YouTube. 
Mine is a very basic overview, so we know the correct terminology so we can find what we're looking for in our configuration guide. OK, on to step 4, where we'll configure it for use with the helicopter. I kept very little of the default profile, as you can see. I've kept autopilot, allocated that to joystick button 6, as well as the lights to button 5 on the Velocity 1 flight stick. Under the instruments and systems and engine instruments, I've kept engine auto start, and that's joystick button 1, and I've kept all the camera assignments. Other than that, everything else was deleted. We're ready to go. We're going to be using search by name. Click in the box and type collective. As you do, your filter should change to all. If not, manually change it. And one of the items that comes up is collective access, effectively our throttle. And I'm going to allocate it to this axis here. I'm going to use that as my collective or my throttle. Click in the box. I'm going to start scanning, move the joystick and validate. That axis is now my collective. You'll note the reverse axis is ticked. This means fully forward is low power. And when you pull it back towards you, it will be full power. This is the more correct way of doing it, but I prefer the traditional method. So I'm going to untick the reverse axis. Collective done. Let's move on. And again, search by name. And I'm going to type in cyclic. And I'm looking for two things here. The longitudinal axis and the lateral axis. These are set separately. The longitudinal axis is when you are moving the joystick forwards and backwards. The lateral axis is when you are moving the joystick side to side. So we'll now go ahead and configure those. And we'll start with the longitudinal axis. Click in the box, start scanning, push my joystick forward, joystick L, axis Y, validate, done. Lateral axis now, push it to the side, Joystick L, axis X, and validate. We can now bank left and right and pitch up and down. Back to our search by name. Filter still on all. Clear our previous entry. And I'm going to type in trim. And there's one very important setting I'm looking for. And that is rotor trim reset. When flying the helicopter, we use a variety of trims. But we need a quick way to reset them all back to zero if we need to for landing. There it is rotor trim reset and for ease of access i'm going to set this to the trigger on the joystick follow exactly the same process press the trigger it's button 18 and that's done you of course can set trim to wherever you want just make sure it's easy to access we're done with that now back to search by name i'm going to type in tail and i'm looking for tail rotor access there it is and this is effectively my rudders the twist axis on the joystick. When I twist it left or right, if you had rudder pedal, you'd allocate it here. Start scanning, twist the joystick, joystick L, axis Z, we're done here. This will allow me to yaw the helicopter left and right. Back to search by name, and I'm going to type in rotor. And here I'm looking for my main trimming functions. So scroll down till you come to the control trimming surfaces. And we're looking for increase and decrease the rotor longitudinal trim and the same again for the lateral trim. There they are. These are critically important for flying a helicopter. This allows you to trim your pitch, nose up and down, and to move forward in a helicopter you need quite a lot of nose down as well as lateral movement. You'll soon get tired if you're having to put pressure on the joystick pushing the nose forward all the time. So you use trimming to take the pressure off. So it's fairly hands-free flying when you're straight and level. This is especially important for something like the Velocity 1 flight stick, which has a fair amount of tension on it. So to increase longitudinal and decrease longitudinal trim, I'm going to use buttons 17 and 16. I recommend using buttons for this action and not the trim wheel. And for the lateral trim, increase and decrease, I'm going to use button 8 for increase and button 4 for decrease, as I'll use these less often. So let me go ahead and configure these. I'll start with increase longitudinal trim, scan, press the button and validate. Now for decrease, I'm going to use button 16. Where's it gone now? There it is, decrease rotor longitudinal trim. Click in the box, start scanning, press the button and validate. Now for the lateral axis, 
for the trims. Again, I'm going to start with increase lateral trim. I'm going to use joystick button 8. OK, I see that's already used. We can change that later. I'm going to accept that and validate and make a mental note of a change is required later on. And now to decrease the lateral trim, I'm going to choose button number 4. Press that. That one's clear. Validate. Done. If you do have a conflict, easiest way to identify it is search by input. Click in the box, press the button. Now we can see the allocations to that button. For the purposes of this tutorial, I'll just keep it simple. I'm going to clear that input. That's done. Validate. And now we no longer have a conflict. And that's it. We are done. We can just quickly do a check, change the filter to assign, collapse all the menus. And now we can do a quick cross check to make sure everything's been allocated. First of all, we'll check power management and that should be our cyclic control. There it is. It's on the axis. That's fine. Let's go to flight control surfaces and primary flight control. And now we've got our tail rotor axis or rudders, longitudinal and lateral axis assigned. Onto control trimming surfaces. There's our all important reset and both longitudinal and lateral trims. All good here. Very important, of course. Don't forget to apply and save. We can now quickly jump into sim and make sure everything's working correctly. Welcome to the Cabri G2. I'm now slowly increasing the collective. You can see the percentage increasing there. Slow and easy does it. I'm just starting to get lift off. The torque from the rotor straight away. I can feel it. I'm having to push forward very slightly on the joystick to try and get into a stable hover position. It's certainly not easy, particularly for an old bush pilot such as myself. There we are. That's feeling a bit more stable now. Small adjustments on both the cyclic and the collective on an ongoing basis to hold me steady. Now twisting the joystick first left and then right to check that the yaw is working. And that seems to be OK. I do have both assists on at the moment. I've now increased the collective, more power to the rotors and push the nose down. So I'm moving forward and now testing left and right bank as well as pitch up and down. The one thing you learn in a helicopter very quickly is it's only tiny small movements at any one time. I'm now testing my trim, lateral and longitudinal trims. That's trim nose down. Now trim nose up, that seems to be working. You just need a very light touch on the button. As with all things, with the helicopter, it gently does it. I can see there's a helipad over there and we'll attempt a landing. By way of excuse, I will get them in early. I'm in no way an experienced sim helicopter pilot. I'm now going to press the trigger and reset all my trims. You'd normally anticipate this and hold the nose down a little bit. Whoa, she jumped right up. One eye on my vertical speed. And I now want to transition from forward flight into more of a hover. Are you flying helicopters in sim? And do you enjoy them? Let me know in the comments below. I hope this config guide helps you in some small way enjoy your helicopters more. I'm certainly going to be spending much more time in the cockpit. If you found this useful, don't forget to subscribe and give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Trying to land from an external point of view is not that easy. You sort of get that feeling so close and yet so far. Constantly playing with the collective to stop me dropping out of school. Oh, that was hard. Hey, but I'm down. Thanks everybody for watching. Take care, look after yourself. See you again soon and bye for now.